Six weeks to the midterms, and out of the hundreds of races on the ballot, a handful are going to have resounding consequences. NBC News is highlighting 25 midterm races with the biggest impact on congressional control, abortion rights, and the 2024 presidential race. The list includes nine Senate races, eight in the House, and eight gubernatorial races, which is a great way to break it down. So with me now, NBC News senior political editor and the master of all of this, Mark Murray, co-chair of American Bridge 21st Century and former Planned Parenthood president, Cecile Richards, Ashley Parker, senior national political correspondent at The Washington Post, and former Republican congressman David Jolly. So, Mark, first to you, the major storyline here is abortion. And the abortion rights, starting with Kansas, what we've seen in other states in some of those special elections. Let's take a look at the Democrats holding an all-time high advantage on this issue in the latest NBC News poll. Explain how that would factor into the races that you're highlighting for control of Congress. Yeah. And so, Andrea, you know, abortion uh, ended up coming out, uh, obviously has changed the entire midterm landscape, which really energized Democrats. And as you ended up mentioning, Democrats have a very big advantage on abortion in our poll. We also have six in 10 voters who disagree with the Supreme Court decision overturning Roe versus Wade. So this has energized Democrats. They actually feel like they have the voters on their side. And of course, when it comes to the governor's races that we're watching, abortion is... Uh, uh, a an issue in which you have real effect. You know, often we focus so much on congressional control, who's going to control the House and the Senate. But when it comes to these gubernatorial races, these are the ones where a governor in places like Arizona, in Michigan, in Wisconsin can have a huge impact. So let's talk about Arizona, because that, I mean, they have just approved a 100-year-old ban, a total ban, instead of the 15 you know, 15-week ban that uh, they had previously put in place. Yeah, and, and Andrew, it goes back before Arizona even became a state. And so, you know, before the Dobbs decision, you know, obviously Democrats seeing Carrie Lake was the most likely Republican nominee for this race, she now is the nominee, that they were thinking, we're going to end up relitigating 2020. Carrie Lake doesn't believe that Joe Biden was the legitimate president. You end up having, she's running against Katie Hobbs, who is the state's secretary of state. But with abortion now, it's not relitigating 2020. It's about what would you do as governor of Arizona? And we're seeing Katie Hobbs and the Democrats air advertisement after advertisement going after the abortion decision and, and really putting Lake on the defensive. So, Andrea, you know, obviously Arizona is a state where, uh, where we saw the presidential contest decided by just about 10,000 votes in 2020. It's always close, but Democrats are hoping that the issue of abortion not only energizes their voters, but puts the Republicans on the defensive. And to CEO Richards, we've seen that abortion access is and legality in states like Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, largely coming down to which party wins these governor's mansions. In Arizona Friday, as we've just been discussing, the county superior court judge issuing the ruling supporting Republican Senate nominee Blake Masters call to reinstate a 158-year-old law. How are advocates mobilizing to get the voters to the polls there? It also relies on motivation and turnout. Exactly, um, Andrea. And, you know, this is an issue that obviously started when the Dobbs decision came down overturning Roe. But the Republican Party and Republican leadership keep making it worse. Um, again, as you say, in Arizona, they've just overturned, basically gone back to 150 years to a full abortion ban. The state of Michigan, you, as you know, there is a major ballot initiative now that is going to drive out turnout uh, in the state of Michigan, where there's a highly competitive uh, gubernatorial race. And then Pennsylvania, which, of course, is always a state we, we watch. In Pennsylvania, the surge in registration among women voters is enormous. And when you look at who's registering to vote, they are registering four to one Democratic advantage. And many of these are young women. So I think the interesting thing about what's happened since the uh, Supreme Court overturned Roe is that two groups of voters are highly motivated now. Uh, women who don't always vote in midterm elections, but are uh, uh, you know so upset about what's happened. And then, of course, the critical swing and in independent women voters who can't believe that the Republican Party re would return us uh, to a day when government government made decisions about pregnancy instead of women. Yeah, and in that Pennsylvania race, it's, it's Mastriani who 
says it should be a total ban, which goes beyond anything that Pennsylvania has considered, but the Republican legislature there has repeatedly put a ban or a partial ban on the ballot, and that's been overturned, you know, vetoed by the Democratic governor, who's term limited. So that Mastriano race is really uh, against Josh Shapiro, the Democrat, uh, who is in favor of abortion rights is really a, a cutting-edge race there. Ashley, let's talk about the 552 midterm races that NBC News counts identifies 201 candidates as election deniers. 201 candidates out of 552. Their wins could have wide impacts on 2024, on election denying and uh, trying to overturn the election electoral college counts in 2024. That's absolutely right. And for Republicans, this was a popular position that they felt, whether or not they believed it, that they needed to take during a primary where the threat was from the hard right base, from sort of what President Biden would call the ultra MAGA Republicans, where former President Trump wanted to come in and play the role of kingmaker or spoiler. And, and now you have these candidates who have these positions. It's interesting, now that they're in a general, it's not necessarily quite so popular or quite so beneficial. So you see some of them tempering their language a little bit, uh, sometimes scrubbing some of the most incendiary uh, statements and claims from their website. But the flip side is early on, and not in a ton of these races, but Democrats, in some cases in the primaries, got involved on the Republican side to try to booster the more extreme election denying candidate with the belief that they would be easier to beat in November. That has often been the case. Uh, former Senator McCaskill famously did that to her advantage. But one thing that has changed, what makes the strategy a smidge riskier, is this country has shown a willingness to put election deniers in, in high office, in, in fact, the highest office, as they did uh, with former President Trump. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, actually, when the elections finally happen. And David Jolly, as a former Republican, former Republican Congress member, in Florida, the gubernatorial race easily makes the NBC list of races to watch. A lot of talks this weekend about Ron DeSantis, New York Times sure. reporting about his rivalry with Texas Governor Abbott, with, you know, these unfortunate migrants being pawns in the middle of this. They're competing who can bus more migrants north to blue states. The Washington Post yeah. about a summer rivalry between DeSantis and his former mentor, Donald Trump, about 2024 right. ambitions. Yeah, Andrea, look, for, for the November race, the Florida gubernatorial race has a very different dynamic than, say, Arizona with Kerry Lake and Pennsylvania with Mastriano. In Florida, Ron DeSantis is a very strong incumbent with more financial resources than any other politician in the country. And he is absent Donald Trump, the front runner for the GOP nomination in 24. So the Democrat Charlie Chris needs a lot of that national Democratic momentum coming out of the Dobbs decision to try to make him competitive. In many ways, Ron DeSantis is already looking past Charlie Chris, but we don't quite see the penalty for that. You know, normally politicians get penalized for looking past a race. The question really comes down to this rivalry then between Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. Should Ron DeSantis actually be elected in November? And Andrea, the biggest question is actually one of timing, because the one thing Ron DeSantis has never done is actually challenge Donald Trump publicly, right? He was a mentee who followed Trump, then he ran beside Donald Trump, but he's never taken him on. If Donald Trump announces he's running in 24 before Ron DeSantis does, now DeSantis has to challenge Trump. But if Trump doesn't announce before election day of this year, it's Ron DeSantis's field going into the 24 election.